Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about total internal reflection and also we are going to be deriving a formula for the critical angle. So let's get started. Let's imagine that we have a laser light which is going through window glass of refractive index 1.5. As the light hits the boundary between glass and air, it will refract. Now because we are going from a material of a higher refractive index 1.5 to a lower refractive index 1, the light is going to bend away from the normal. So this means that rather than going straight, the ray is going to bend away from the normal at some angle of refraction. If my angle of incidence was higher, the angle of refraction will also be higher. Let's illustrate this. For instance, if the incoming laser light was coming in from this direction, rather than going straight through, it will bend away from the normal once again, which is towards this direction. Now notice that the angle of refraction is now starting to approach the boundary. As we increase our angle of incidence, our angle of refraction will also be increasing. Now, there's going to be a special angle at which the, uh, the ray will fully remain in the original medium. And this angle is known as the critical angle. Let's draw this. I'm going to draw this with a different color just to illustrate that this is indeed a very special angle. And when we are at the critical angle, the ray will fully remain in the original medium like so. This is illustrated along here and this angle is known as the critical angle so I'm just going to call that angle C. This means that when the angle of incidence is at or above the critical angle total internal reflection occurs which is a really more important concept in physics. One final aspect to mention is that if our angle of incidence goes beyond the critical angle, which is this new ray that I've drawn over here, it will totally internally reflect like so. And this is the trajectory that the ray is going to follow. Okay, now let's see if we can derive a formula for the critical angle. Now let's derive an expression for the critical angle. We're going to need to use Snell's law. If you can't quite remember what Snell's law is, have a look for my video on Snell's law and refraction. Summarized, uh, we can write down Snell's law as n sine theta is equal to a constant, which is the formula which is given in your formula booklet. Remember, anytime a quantity is a constant, we can also write this as the product of the quantities before equals the product of the quantities afterwards. In other words, n sine theta 1, where theta 1 is the angle of incidence, is going to equal to n2 sine theta 2. Now, in this case, we'll be looking for the critical angle. So what I'm going to do is just rearrange for the critical angle and I'm going to say that sine theta 1, which is the angle of incidence of course, is going to equal to n2 divided by n times sine theta 2. Now it's really important to note that when our angle of incidence theta 1 is equal to the critical angle, the angle of refraction theta 2 is actually equal to 90 degrees. This is clearly visible in our diagram in which the angle of refraction is defined as the angle between the ray and the normal, which in this case is clearly 90 degrees. This means that we can simplify our expression up here 
even more. So let's rewrite this as sine of the critical angle, which is theta 1, is equal to n2 divided by n multiplied by sine of theta 2, which is sine of 90 degrees. However, remember that sine of 90 degrees is actually equal to 1. So this means that the sine of the critical angle will be equal to n2 divided by m times 1, which I'm not going to write this because any quantity multiplied by 1 is equal to the quantity itself. Even a further simplification is that our second refractive index is the, is the refractive index of air, which is equal to 1. So in this case, the critical angle, the sine of the critical angle will be equal to 1 over the original substance of refractive index and uh, of refractive index n. And this is the formula that has been given in our formula sheets. Now let's actually substitute some numbers and calculate the value for the critical angle. So we know that sine of the critical angle is 1 over n. That means that the critical angle C will be equal to the inverse sine of 1 over n. Now remember, n is the original refractive index, which is 1.5. So we can substitute that into this equation. Inverse sine of 1 over 1.5. Let's make sure that our calculator is in degree mode, not in radians mode. And we are going to get approximately 42 degrees up to two significant figures. Okay, folks, so just to summarize in this video, we've described what total internal reflection is. We've also derived a formula for the critical angle. Please bear in mind that this assumes that our second refractive index N2 is just air. And that's why I've, I've substituted the value of 1 in this equation. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was useful.